Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. And I'm delighted to be joined once again by Niall Alabaidi, who is, of course, the uh, CEO of New Market Holidays. So uh, morning, Niall. How are you? Morning. Very good. Thanks. Well, it's great to see you. And of course, you're in the news this week, Niall. You've made the news because... Uh, very interestingly, obviously, you came and took over as CEO at Newmarket, I think, in September 2019. Um, yeah. uh, but yesterday announced that you've actually taken another step in the business uh, to become a shareholder as well. So uh, tell us about that. Um, well, I guess like a lot of businesses, um, having been through the last two years, we were looking at our finances going forward and an opportunity came up for me to invest in the business. Um, and it was really a no-brainer once once that came to the table. Um, it's been a obviously a very challenging two years since I joined, um, but out of that adversity, I built an amazing relationship with the rest of the board and the other three owners. Um, we share very similar values, and, and as a result, our, our visions are fairly similar. Um, and then with the rest of the team behind us, it, it, I mean, as, like I say, it was a no-brainer. All right. OK, so yesterday's announcement didn't detail the level of your shareholding. I'm not sure if that's something you're able to um, reveal today. Um, it's, it's a significant shareholding. It's certainly not a majority, but it, it is a significant shareholding. OK, all right. And you mentioned just there, just to be clear on the ownership structure, there's the two founders and then another gentleman that sort of invested a little bit later. But you are, in fact, the only well, since I think 1984, you're the first new shareholder. Is that right? Yeah. That, that's correct and and I guess I'm very grateful to them for having that level of trust in me like I said before the last two years have probably intensified the relationship with the board and the decisions and the challenges we face um, and that's brought us together in a different way not just with the owners the, the other two members of the board um, and I think that's probably helped with this this decision from both sides uh, it, it certainly is the right decision for myself. And I think because of those challenges and the decisions we've had to make, they've got a view of me that they probably wouldn't have got uh, yeah. without the circumstances and, and that this is the outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it said in the release yesterday that it was A, to support the recovery, but also for future growth. And you talked to, I think there's a quote from you saying you're really excited now uh, about the opportunities, go opportunities going forward. And of course, putting your own money in a business, I mean, that certainly shows that you feel very confident about the business and about the sector, I guess. I, I'm, I'm very confident. I'm very, I, I mean, at the time of joining New Market Holidays, I was in a, a really great role with Emirates Holidays, part of Donata, a very big organisation. Um, and it, 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 was, it wasn't an easy decision to leave, but the opportunity back then with New Market Holidays was clear. And I don't think any of that has really changed. It's in a customer demographic that's growing. Um, they're becoming more adventurous. Um, although all of us are obviously being affected by the challenges of cost of living, it's probably slightly more padded than most of those sectors from a travel perspective. Um, the complexity of what we do is, is more defendable. You're not gonna get Google trying to do complex tours. It's very experiential. Um, and, and, and it just fits on all those levels. And, and within our sector, there's a real opportunity to, to, to grow and grow and grow. So that was the decision way back then. We've obviously been through two years of challenges and it's certainly not gone how I expected it to no, go. No, I feel really sorry for you. You joined and then a couple of months we go plunged into a pandemic. It's been a baptism of fire, it's, hasn't it's, it? It has been, it has been. And obviously the, the horrific goings on in Russia and yeah. Ukraine, which I mean, I obviously heartfelt sorrow and just disbelief at what's going on. And we all keep our fingers crossed that that comes to an end very soon for everyone involved. So, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a difficult time, but I think what the last two years has taught me, this is a business, we're very robust. Um, we don't have a lot of debt, even with what we've been through. Um, we have a team of people, and I've said this time and again, but it's genuine. They have pulled out all the stops and despite, I mean, I was looking at some of the numbers in the last two years, we've had 63,000 passengers cancel or transfer. We've had 10,000 departures last year. Uh, we've got another 10,000 in the next three months. So it just gives you an idea of the scaling up. 
But yeah. throughout that, we've managed to manage those relationships with our trade partners, with our customers. Things like Trustpilot have actually gone up in that time, which I think is phenomenal. Yeah. We've gone from 3.7 to 4.3. And it shows that we've managed to not only defend the challenges, we've managed to take our customers with us. So when yeah. you when you put all of those in place, it, it was it was a very obvious decision. There's a huge opportunity here. All right, well, we'll come on to talk about all the, all the exciting new innovations and things that are going to be coming up then, Niall. But um, just before we finish, you know, on the, the, the structure and things, because it said uh, the investment had come, obviously, from the new shareholding, but also a new round of financing. So you've also got some more bank support. But you said you've not got loads of debt, but you have had a new round of financing, yeah? We have, yeah. I mean, we, we looked at the situation and obviously the uncertainties that we've been through and who knows what the next nine 12 months are going to be like we've got obviously the challenges in eastern europe and, and like i said a horrible situation there the pandemic if anything the last two years has taught us is you can't take your eye off that ball hopefully things yeah. are moving in the right direction and it really feels that way and we're seeing that in our trading but we'd be mad not to have something in our back pocket to protect us if that goes the wrong way and things like sustainability is we know is going to become a massive thing if it's not already um, and we're starting to put changes in place to respond to that so th the conclusion from the board was we it, it was just the right thing to have a little bit more there available from a cash yeah. perspective to respond to all those scenarios okay great well look you mentioned trading there and you're saying things starting to go in the right direction which is wonderful to hear um, I know you had a new campaign out for January and February, which was around your, um, what was it, reconnect, reimagine, rediscover. You had some yeah. discounts across departures uh, in 2022 and 23. So did that really kick things off for a good start to the year? It, it, it was, it has been. Um, obviously, we had the, the arrival of Omicron um, late November, mid to late November. So that put everything a little bit um, in jeopardy with regard to turn of year and peak um, campaigns. We actually pushed our campaign back from just after Christmas and we yeah. launched it in January. Yeah. So the first two weeks of January were, were um, unsurprisingly quite yeah. slow and we, yeah. we were way, way behind. But then once we launched that mid-January, I think we were, we were a little bit lucky with the timing, but the rest of January caught up for those two weeks we missed. Good. And for February, we, we were well ahead of target across the board. Um, the, the, the start of March was, was a bit slow, but we're seeing that pick up again. And we're obviously monitoring. But the last couple of days have been well above target again. So we, and what's we, been we, the impact on consumer confidence of the um, conflict in, in Ukraine? Are you seeing that in, your, in the demand or in sort of visits to your website or calls to travel agents? Have you got any kind of steer on that yet? I think I think there's there's there is an impact. Obviously, uncertainty never helps the situation, and it's certainly localized geographically. We are getting customers, and we're obviously changing some of our tours. We had tours going to Russia, yeah. um, which we've obviously now cancelled. Um, but across the board, I don't think it has been significant so far. The, the, the challenge is our big peak campaign ended on the twenty eighth of Feb. The the the, the yeah. Prices in Russia had already started. Yeah. Those, those four days at the end of Feb were phenomenally strong. But then you go into a dip when you come out of campaign. So it sort of coincided with that. Like I say, the last two days suggest that things are picking up again. And we haven't got another campaign starting for till next week. So there's there's no, it's not campaign led, it's not offer led. We're seeing it come back out. Um, yeah. So I think it's partly to do with our, our, our offer shape. But I think there will always be an impact from anything as big as this. Um, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about some trends you're seeing then. You're saying, obviously, the, you're seeing the bookings coming through. But what are people booking? Maybe you could just sort of talk to us about the types of holidays or durations or destinations. What, what's proving to be popular now? Well, from a distribution perspective, we're seeing an incredible performance from trade. Um, if we look at, so we, we're, our comparables against 2019, because obviously you can't look yeah. at the last two years. And for, since the 1st of January, and this includes that two weeks when we didn't have any offers out, we are up against 2019 through, through trade partners. And 
we think that's partly down to the fact that the relationships we've built over the time, but we've kept our four people on the road with a head of that team. Um, we've got our commercial services team of three people. And when, when obviously everyone was looking at costs and where to uh, manage them more carefully through the last two years, we'd, we'd seen a real uplift in trade pre-pandemic and we, we put everything, well, we, 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 we were confident that this would be an area that we could focus on on the other side. So we never took any cost out of those areas really. Um, and I think it's paid back uh, really strongly. And we, we, we think there's a massive opportunity going forward. Within that, travel agent partners have always been very, very strong on our long haul. So yeah. that's coming through. It is skewed a little bit more to 2023 because long haul sells earlier, but we yeah. are seeing 22 selling. Um, but what we've also seen, which wasn't historically the case pre-pandemic, our, our travel agent partners didn't really get behind our British Isles tours as much. Oh, but yeah. given what's happening now, we are seeing a great proportion coming through from British Isles, Europe, um, which is great. So, so it's, it's, it's fairly mixed and we're seeing good sales everywhere, um, really. And it, but trade is, is the channel that's really pushing it. And, and with the trade, Nan, I don't know if you know that, is it is it just more coming through existing partners or are you actually finding you've got some new agents starting to work with new market? There's certainly new agents. There's agents that probably we, we haven't worked for a while that we're rebuilding. Yeah. So much is obviously about relationship building, isn't it? And, and trust and confidence in us as a brand. Um, and like I say, having those people on the road who are able to now go back into the shops and build those relationships. Yeah. That, that's where it, it sits. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know the exact mix, but we're certainly yeah, yeah. seeing new, new agents coming through. Okay, and look, everyone's talking about how the agent is just more and more valuable, really, because people, it's still complex, isn't it? I mean, you're, you go to so many different destinations, so you've got to learn so many different restrictions are different, aren't they, in every single country? And so that must still be something you need agents to help help sort of communicate with the customer around. Yeah, completely. I, I mean, the, the one thing, thinking about it, that in the last two years probably changed is that home working group. Obviously, through the pandemic, that became very key to us and we yeah. built strong relationships there and, and that has continued to grow as well so that's another area we want to focus but yeah it's the knowledge it's the relationships they build with their customers it's the trust that what we sell is complex but also long haul we're taking the, there's a lot of our customers who aren't necessarily um as brave as they would be with these destinations and they need that little bit of yeah. confidence building so, yeah. yeah, it all fits what, really nice. And what about average selling prices and duration? I know you're saying you're getting good good sales for long haul. So, that you know, by the very nature, people probably travel a bit longer. But when you're doing your comparison, are you finding people are trading up at all because they've been sat on some money and haven't really been able to go anywhere and haven't been able to spend it for a couple of years? I guess in your demographic, that, that could be the case. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some very big bookings coming through. I mean... One of the things that obviously everyone in travel is keeping an eye on is costs and how that's going to impact the prices like for like. And we're certainly seeing prices are a little bit higher, but they're not as much higher as we feared. Now, obviously, with, with the cost of living and the oil prices, yeah. we're keeping, and one of the things we're communicating is, book now, definitely. We're hopeful there's not going to be an impact later down the line. Well, we, we, I think we've run, a, we've run a story this week saying there's surely going to be fuel surcharges and things coming in. So I guess exactly what you're saying, you just got to keep an eye on these things because it could happen, particularly on long haul flying, which I guess then would affect your prices that you'd have to put out into the market. Yeah, it would. But then I, I think that's again, ties back to the complexity, the nature of what we sell, the, the um, experiential side of it it's a once in a lifetime thing that we sell. So don't get me wrong, I totally would not underestimate the risk of costs increasing and we need to manage that and with our supplier partners and, and we need to ensure that there's definite value for money for our customers. Um, but I think we're in a space that enables us to do that a little bit more easily. Okay, good. All right, well, so I did uh, say I was going to ask you about what's to come in future then. I mean, you know, I never, I'm never happy with what's happening right now, Niall. I want to know what your plans are. You, you talked about the exciting opportunities. Um, have you been sort of 
thinking of new ways to innovate the brand or, or ways that you work with the trade? There's definitely new products that we're looking at. Uh, there's areas where we, we have seen growth that we think we can expand more. Um, that single traveller area is, is a real opportunity, I think, um, and it's certainly something we think we can expand on. Um, like probably everyone, there's people are becoming more demanding. They want to see a bit more flexibility around what they're buying. So we're, we're looking at how we move across to that. And it's all about making sure you don't change everything and put your traditional customer off, but iterative moving in the right direction. Yeah. And, then, and then the other thing I talked about earlier, sustainability is yeah. going to be key. We, we know that we're doing everything we can. We've got a, a, a massive strategic stream that's looking at as a business, how we manage our carbon offsetting and all, all those elements within that. But we also, I think we feel that there is a little bit of a, everything's defensive with travel and, and there is an opportunity to talk up the good that travel does, not so much sustainability, but responsibility yeah. in the, the mental health piece. Um, educating people about the world and also that redistribution of wealth globally from wealthy nations to some of these countries that are absolutely dependent on travel. Millions of people's uh, livelihoods depends on it. So it, it's a two-way thing. It's, it's, it's making sure we're getting the right strategy in place for that sustainability. And you're, right. and you're right. I think travel does get wrapped over the knuckles a lot and we don't necessarily shout as much about all the good that we do. Yeah, so, so there is going to be a little bit around that, I think. We, we need to start focusing on that. But I think as an industry, I'm not just talking new market holidays, to yeah. your point, we as an industry need to own the things that we need to improve on. But at the same time, we need to celebrate the good we do and make sure people know about it. So th there is a little bit in there as well. Okay, all right. Well, just finally, before I let you go, because I think this is important and you did touch on it earlier, but in the release about you taking this shareholder, you talked about the unwavering, uh, unwavering dedication of your outstanding team. Um, it's been really tough for people, hasn't it? Uh, how are you doing? I mean, did, presumably you had to downsize a little bit through the business. I know you said you kept the, the, you know, the field sales team together, but are you sort of now starting to recruit again? Are you looking at sort of upscaling now? Yeah, I mean, we... we... We lost a few people early in the pandemic, um, which was a really tough experience for everyone involved. Um, yeah. But then from that point, we basically, the team reduced their hours for us for a long period. We used the furlough scheme a lot and we didn't really have to make any major decisions on um, taking headcounts out of the business. So most of the people here have been through this journey with us and they've given a lot. A, an awful lot um, and we're only successful because of what they've done now we're in a situation where I talked just now we've had all these cancellations transfers and some of that's still happening we've had 10,000 passengers go away in the last four or five months but then we've got another 10,000 in the next couple of months we're, we're pointing in both directions and, and that is a challenge yeah and you're everyone, trying to sell and still deal with can yeah really exactly that and everyone's got attrition. We know that there's there's challenges with attrition, but but we are we are so far successfully replacing people who've gone, and most people have stuck with us. And we are starting to build back um, cautiously because, like I say, we don't know what's going to happen over the next nine months. We are starting to build back roles um, and grow again. So I think it is it is a positive time. It's an exciting time, but in some ways. The next nine months is almost as hard as anything we've faced in the last two years for the reason that we're pointing in both directions now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be challenging, but I think it'll be fun. I think it's, it's good to be sending people away. On oh, I know. I, it must feel amazing. And particularly as well, for what you said about the people on the ground in these destinations, because they must be desperate to get back to work and to be receiving your customers. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I was fortunate to go on a Lapland, our Lapland trip uh, between... Uh, just before Christmas and and you, it's actually being there and experiencing it that you realize how important what we do is and you yeah. see the enjoyment that everyone gets and it, it, it's there are areas we know we need to improve but we've also found our customers 
are very, very understanding that, that, that the pandemic has meant that things are, are building back everywhere. So, so it's, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship with our customers and uh, a really positive experience. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, we're grateful to talk to you today now. Congratulations as well on your investment. It's brilliant. I mean, it doesn't say much more confidence in a business and a sector than, as I said, putting your own money in. And I wish you every success with everything you've got coming up, all those departures you've got coming and fingers crossed that things do keep, you know, quite stable and we can continue to grow and move forward. So thank you so much for your time, Niall. Thank you very much.